In this video, we shall learn how to use Scilab for studying continuous time linear time invariant systems. So to define a transfer function, you need to first define the transfer function variable s as the polynomial variable in Scilab. And this is how you do it. After defining the transfer function variable s, you can define your continuous time transfer function using the syslin function. Here c stands for a continuous time system and then you would write down the numerator of the transfer function and then you would write down the denominator of the transfer function. And this way you can define a transfer function of this form. Also if the transfer function is given in zero pole gain form you can also implement that in this way. You would have to first write down the numerator polynomial in the factorized form and then you would have to write down the denominator polynomial in the factorized form. After doing that you can hit enter and you would see that Scilab has expanded everything and has given returned you the transfer function that you desired. With that, now let us see how we can find out the transient response of a system. So first, we need to define time as a linear space. Say we want up to 10 seconds. And imagine we want to find out the impulse response of the system just you just defined. So csim is a function with which we can simulate the impulse res time response of a system. And imp is defined as the impulse input for the system. So after generating the impulse response, we can plot the impulse response. As you can see, it is pretty simple. We can also label the graph properly. X grid, this function creates a grid pattern on the plot. And X title takes three, input, three inputs. The first string is the title of the plot. The second string is the title of the X axis of the plot. And the third one is the title of the vertical axis of the plot. So this way now we have a grid and proper axis labels in our impulse response plot. Now, if we want the step response of the same system, all we have to do is to change that string from IMP to step and plotting the response will give us the impulse response, the step response of the system. Now let us do a cool program with this. Let us simulate the transient response of all second order systems, second order systems without any zero, with different damping ratios and plot them all on the same figure. So let us start by writing a for loop. We shall start our damping ratio from 0 and with the step size of 0.2 we would end our damping ratio at 1.4. And within that for loop we would define transfer functions using the variable zeta. The numerator would be 1, we are considering undamped natural frequency of 1 radian per second and the denominator to be s square plus 2 zeta s plus 1. And now we can simulate the step response of all these systems by running the for loop. and we can then plot these responses. So the loop will run through all these values of theta and plot the responses. So here we have a plot of all the transient responses for second order and different second order systems with different damping ratios.
Not only that, we can actually simulate the response with any possible input to the system. Not only step or impulse, we can in fact find out the response of the system with any arbitrary input. Let us see an example where we would simulate the response of a system to a pulse input. Let us redefine our time samples here. And now let us define our system as a simple first order system as 1 by s plus 1. Now we can define our pulse input using the built-in scilab function square wave and now simulate the transient response of the system when excited with this square wave function that we have generated. With this, now we can plot the transient response along with the input. So as you can see, we have both the input to the system and the response of the system to that same input. For another example, we can, for example, simulate the transient response of the system when excited with the sinusoidal input. So all we have to do is to change the input to sine t. And now we have the response of the system to a sinusoidal input. We can plot the input and the output at the same time. In the next video, we shall see how to use state space models and simulate their transient responses. Thank you.